Hey everyone, welcome to the homestead. Today I'm going to be putting the uh, finishing touches on our pig area, um, primarily by um, putting down, got some hay to put down for some bedding and putting up uh, a single <coughs> electric wire along the fence, um, more just as a discourager for uh, rooting right near the fence. I've never done an electric fence, so um, again, go, stepping out in, <coughs> into, uh, into the unknown a little bit, and um, I'm hoping that it works. Okay, so my general understanding with how this works is, so <clears throat> we're using an AC fence line, and this one is a two mile uh, 0.07 joule output and a 0.21 joule stored. Um, <clears throat> and if you actually look on the bottom of the, on the, the box there, you see a bunny and a chicken. Um, so this isn't technically rated for, sorry, something was distracting over there, for pig. Um, but something you have to understand about how this outputs is it's based off of a two mile wire run. Um, that's the amount of energy that's over that entire length of that single strand, assuming that it's not getting grounded out by anything. We're doing significantly less than that. We're doing maybe 200 square feet <clears throat> or 200 feet total. Um, actually not even that. It's about, it's less than 50 that way, 20 that way, 50. So we're doing 140 feet. So um, I'm thinking that the energy output of this little guy is going to be more than enough to give just that discouraging little tinge. And that's all I'm looking for on this one. I don't need a lot of bite. I'm not really worried about using this as the, you know, discouraging. This is not main containment. This is a discourager to keep them away from the actual mesh fence that's there. And again, mainly it's just about keeping them from rooting on the bottom. So... Uh, I've got the, the, that's the Energizer. It's AC. We would prefer to get a solar powered one at some point. They're significantly more expensive. This one was 34 bucks. The lowest uh, solar one that I saw was I think 119 bucks. So um, we got to do with what you can with the budget that you have. Got some um, galvanized wire here, galvanized steel uh, wire. Uh, the galvanized is good for the rain. Holds up a lot better uh, for the moisture. Doesn't rust as quickly. Got two tensioners. This is one of them. Um, this goes on either end, and it's really pretty self-explanatory. You put the wire through that little hole, and it's a ratcheting type thing. As you do that, it tightens it up and puts tension on the wire. So the general idea that I'm doing here is I'm going to start at... This post here, this is where the gate is, and I'm not gonna go across the gate. I know they make stuff so you can go across the gate. I'm not gonna worry about that. The gate's gonna be stout enough, and I'm just, I'm not worried about that. If I need to worry about that in the future, if I find that I'm, this is not working, I can always add it and fix it later. But what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna put it at the right height down here, I'm gonna mount it, can go all the way down and around there and put the other one on this post here tense it up from both sides and that should be it <clears throat> now going along the t-posts there you don't want uh, the metal obviously so we've got a bunch of these plastic insulators these are made to go on the t-posts and they help hold the wire out. And we'll get this all on video too. Going along the wire, going along the T-post, the wire goes in there for the insulator. And it shouldn't be that complicated. The, the tricky part, and I don't know if I'm gonna get to that today, it'll be in this video, but not maybe today, um, is then grounding it, properly grounding it. And then, and we'll get that, we'll get, I'll cover that when I do it. Um, so for now, um, I'm gonna get to work, okay. Okay, 
Okay, so I've already got my first um, challenge. These are designed to go around the T-post, but if you look at the shape, they're designed to go on this way. So you got the the T part here. Let's see if I can hold the camera. Right, they're supposed to go on like that. So like the the flat part here, the T part that's usually in the front, that's the side that the wire insulator is supposed to be on. That's how it's designed. So I'm doing what I can. Don't know if this is going to work or not, but. I'm putting them on here and I am hooking them on kind of hooking this part here onto one of the the what do you want to call those the little parts that stick out little parts that stick out um and then as I run the wire through I should still be able to run them through and as I t it tenses up it still should keep it away from the post and that's really all these are supposed to do is keep them away from the post not touch metal not ground out the system. So I'm gonna proceed as though um, this is all gonna work still with what I got and we'll go from there. Now, I may not be able to get that far with this today because I'm realizing <clears throat> when I was at the store, I didn't account for everything I needed. And here's what I mean. I did, I, I realized at one point I would encounter at least one wood post, so I got um, a porcelain insulator that has a screw on it. So that will allow me to come over here and get maybe past this post, but not this one, and then not this one. Now this is wood, I can go straight to the wood, I think, as long as it's not touching anything. I'll have to double check about that. Um, but then getting that to that turn. So I may have not thought this through as much as, uh, I thought I did. So I'll get as far as I can. I'll see what I can do with what I have. And if I need to go back to the hardware store, tomorrow's another day. There. Losing the daylight, so uh, not gonna get much further. So we decided to get the hay spread out for their bedding and we'll let them finish doing that. But um, I think what I can get away with, down here you see, got it on here, zip ties. Zip ties are almost always the answer. Um, gonna probably have to use like a screw or something on this post and that post but I shouldn't have to go back to the hardware store. So as soon as I'm done with work tomorrow, I'm working from home uh, this week. As soon as I'm done with work tomorrow, I should be able to come right back out here and get going. So you all will fast forward. Go! We flash forward. I know it doesn't look like it because I'm wearing the same hat and the same shirt, um, but I guarantee you this is another day because uh, it's more light out. Um, I just happen to have this exact same shirt. I've got three of them. They're a work shirt and um, it just happens to work out that way. So I think I've got everything I need to be able to do my plan. I think what I can do, as you see here, I use the zip ties. We already covered that. Um, and I think on the posts back there, I think I can just use regular um, screws and go through the, the plastic and go in there because that's not actually gonna be the part touching the wire. So it still should provide a good insulation um, and attach it to that. And we should be good to go between zip ties and screws and modifying the post, blah, 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 blah. Should be able to make this plan work. So I'm gonna set up the camera and get back at it. See, we got the straw put down and um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right.
I just realized something. Things that you just don't think about when you're doing it. <laughs> I need an insulator here where the tensioner attaches to the post. If I need one down there, I need one here because that's metal and it's touching metal and it's going to the post, just going to the ground. I need to get an insulator. Now I could come up with my own insulator. Shouldn't need much. I'm sure I've got some rubber material or something I can put in there, non-conductive. Uh, that would be a good, if I need to, I can probably just take, probably just take some of that plastic, extra plastic wrap, double it up, shove it behind and be okay. Didn't even think about it. <laughs> Right. Start now waiting. Ow. Air. Soda <laughs> yeah. That hurts. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to review the footage and see how well you saw it, but I mean it's dead on. I'll try to zoom in and <laughs> slow it down. Um, but obviously what happened was as I was driving it down, um, it I, I lifted up and missed and i think as i was driving down i was my body was moving down like this and i was past it i wasn't on the post i was past the post so i was like pulling it in as i was leaning it and just whack hit so i went in put some you know put some peroxide on it put some alcohol on it and put some antibiotic cream on it it's not bleeding profusely, so I prefer to leave wounds open if possible because I, you know, I feel like air, oxygen tends to be better as long as I'm not bleeding out um, and as long as I'm not getting crap in it, which I don't think I'm going to be doing out here. I'm going to take a little bit easier time of it, um, but I do want to keep going and try and get this done before I lose the daylight. So I'm going to get back at it <laughs> safely. Okay, so I actually got done. Luna sniffed it. She got bit. I know it's working. Uh, obviously, I don't have it plugged in now because uh, there's no pigs in here, so there's no reason to have it plugged in. But this is, let me show you what I, how I got it hooked up here. So I've got the, the hot lead here, basically going straight from here to there. Got the ground going down to that grounding rod. And you can see the wire going to the next one and the next one. About 10 feet apart, give or take. Um, they're probably maybe a little bit more, but more is better than close, too close. Um, they say it's at least 10 feet apart. Um, and the idea is you wanna make sure that you're covering a good area so that the signal doesn't have to travel far to get um, back here, back to the base, 
to complete the loop. You know, electricity. And if you don't know, there's lots of good, uh, <laughs> good YouTube university uh, to explain it. Electricity wants to make a loop. It's going from the hot wire here, through your body or through the pig's body or through whatever body, down to the ground, down, and it's trying to find the, the grounding rods down there to come back up through the green wire back to the base it likes to make a loop and that loop is what provides the shock this is supposed to be indoor or undercover so i'm gonna have to bring up some sort of tarping cover thing for it um later because uh as much as i'd like to get the pigs now um we're just gonna have to wait another pay cycle um to make sure that happens the girls have a gymnastics meet their first gymnastics meet coming up uh this weekend so i want to make sure that we um are good for that and mm -hmm. taking care of our other obligations and uh so hopefully early next week we'll have pigs and we'll give this thing a shot um oh there is one more thing i need to do um gonna use the blue barrel uh one of the blue barrels that we got for um chickens were the one that i cut and modified for um the deep the deep freeze chilling the chickens um got a nipple here right here okay water nipple i'll hook that up and show you guys how that works um but that's going to be what we're going to use to water them we'll just put that in here so we can just fill up their water and they have plenty of that and we are ready to go I think we're ready for pigs we just need to get them now so uh hopefully there'll be some available still uh next week when we're ready to get them and we will make a video about that all right so i think this is going to wrap this series this video up for the making of the pig pen we'll make another video when we actually get the piggies in here and see how it all goes so god be with you all and all that you do and remember Keep the faith and keep up the fight. And don't injure yourself. Bye-bye. <laughs>